Yeah. You were all amazing. All of you were amazing this morning. I so love what God's doing. I so love this house and how he's transitioned us. So I want to introduce, I want to introduce this morning a special guest of mine that's here. And um, I tell you what, um, the one good things about wives are um, the many, the many good things. But there's one in particular, one, one thing about my wife, that one special quality that my wife has is that she puts up with me. And I love that quality in her that she puts up with me. I cannot say enough about her. She is my inspiration. She is my drive. When I wake up in the morning, I think that she actually gets up in the morning before I do and just gets her thing all, the hair all fixed up and imposes herself on the bed. Because when I wake up in the morning, I see her, man. It's like a bright light just laying there in the pillow. And so, but I'm so grateful to have her in my life, and she's amazing to me. So if you will stand and welcome my bride, Miss Shelly Abney, Pastor Shelly Abney. And she brings the message of the house today. Oh, y'all know he's full of it. <laughs> all right, you all can see. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Well, it's good seeing all your faces. I'm so glad the snow didn't stay. I mean, it was pretty, and I thought, Randy, as soon as I looked out the window, I was like, oh, and then I was like, well, it really is pretty, as long as it doesn't stay, and um, it looks like it's not. <laughs> so, excuse my voice, I lost it last week, but now I'm better. It's just, at least I have a voice, right? Let me get my notes. I don't know why I'm not on the first page here. All right. So I may keep these in my hand. I don't know. 4 a.m., the Lord woke me up, and this is what he gave me. So here we go. <laughs> um, Monday morning last week, I got up real early, and he spoke and said, teach my people on deliverance. I was like, oh, okay. And then I had a week of craziness, many of you know. Um, you know, when our kids are attacked or... The enemy comes in like a flood to our children. You know, that's something in us rises up. <laughs> so what I'm teaching today um, through some prayer partners and people who I trust and love, you know, we ward for my son. So our son. Um, anyway, just to see what God did this week. I don't have time to go into details. Let's just say, you know, he holds all the victory. Um, total 180 situation turned around um, within hours. So God is so good. He is so good. So what I wanted to ask is, has anyone here ever heard of deliverance? <laughs> and everyone's kind of like blank faced. I know. Like anytime we hear the word, don't we all start thinking some weird thoughts? Like the enemy at Mealy starts putting things in our head. Oh, my word. So years ago, I remember um, everywhere I went, it was a season, everywhere I went, it was something on TV, it was a book, it was something a pastor would preach, it would be on the radio, I would have Christian radio on, and I would hear people teaching. So I was like, Lord, are you trying to get my attention? Like, are you trying to tell me something? You know, obviously, <laughs> he was. <laughs> so I'll get back to that here in a minute, but... I tell you, oh, um, we are the body of Christ, and we are to live victorious lives. That's what God has for his children, and that is what several of us got to witness this week, um, just in my own personal life, really. God is so good. We are to gain freedom and fully live for Christ and as we do that, that will disrupt and thwart all the plans that the enemy has. The Lord wants us to be free. And there's all different words for deliverance. I mean, there's freedom ministries. There's, um, I, I mean, you could, you could look it up online. There's all kinds of different ways we can 
describe a deliverance ministry and not necessarily use the word deliverance. So, you know, God is faithful. Um, he wants his people free. We do know that. And it's because when we get free, and it's a process too. There could be a season that you're going through some freedom and then you live great and then something else comes up. He's so gr good and gracious and loving, isn't he? That he, then he, he knows we're able to deal with something then. So he, he is amazing in how he loves. I love this scripture, and I'm reading it as if I'm just speaking it. It says, I am praising my God, for he is my hiding place. He will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. We could, that's just the word of God, and we can put anyone. We could put our children's names in there, our own names, our friends. It doesn't matter, our coworker. It is for freedom that Christ sets us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Deliverance, it truly is what we all need as believers. We are the ecclesia. You will not find that in the word of God, that word, ecclesia. I'll tell you what it means. It's Greek. It's people. They're called out congregation, called by Christ. Those who are on fellowship with his salvation, we need to be free. We need to be free indeed to do our part to build God's kingdom. It's mentioned in the word, deliverance. I looked this up. It's mentioned in the word of God 296 times. And in the King James Version, 383 times. Who here reads, reads King James? I am not one of them. But I looked it up. I looked it up, the different versions. So, um, you know, and I do love, I love, there's so many scriptures. One particularly that's just in me is how the Lord stretches his out stretches out his arm of deliverance. I mean, do we not love that when that applies to our life of going through something? I mean, he is so faithful. There are seasons of freedom we all experience and will experience. We are to embrace it, seek it out, cry out to the Lord. You know, he's so good about revealing areas of possible brokenness. It's because he already died and paid for it. So let's apply it to our life, be in agreement, and live for him. We all know the water immersion service is next Sunday. How many here, I probably should ask who hasn't been in, because I think just about everybody in here has experienced the water, but let's just show a hand. Who here has been in the water and received some sort of freedom from being in the water, whether it's here or someone else? Yeah, it's, it's almost everybody. It's, it's amazing. And um, I can't even, I've lost track of how many times I've been in the water. Jason and I have gotten to minister around Indiana area, um, the different surrounding states with Pastor Todd. And so there'll be sometimes I don't even have clothes, you know, to change into. And God will say, get in this water. And it'll be a reason why. Sometimes you don't even know. You know, there Remember the one time last year I shared with you guys, it was nine months before I knew I didn't need my asthma, my inhaler for asthma. I mean, like, how do you go nine months and not know you're not using it? You know, I, I didn't use it every day, but I mean, you know, just one day I woke up, I haven't used my inhaler. And he immediately took me back to March and I had gotten in the water of the March. In fact, the Lord had told me before Pastor Todd had visited that time, he said, be the first one in the water. And so I was just obedient and first one in line. So obviously obedience is key too, <laughs> to getting some freedom. But what, one thing I wanna share, the Bible tells us about the pit of hell and the enemy schemes. He is a deceptive enemy, the father of all lies and of everything false. That's John 8, 44. Again, our kingdom identity is to gain victory so that we can take victory over every stronghold in our mind and lives. Jesus says, and we all know the scripture, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus comes to give life and life to the fullest. 
So again, we make a great exchange. One thing I want to talk about with strongholds of the mind. What are they? Well, strongholds of the mind, a fortified place, a place of security and something familiar. And these things started coming to me and I could have written, you know, for pages because we all get it. There's so many issues or troubles or things that could have happened in our life or happened to us. But I've written this. Have you told a lie, committed adultery, murder, distorted thoughts, addiction, shame, unhealthy boundaries, our own opinion of ourselves, especially when it doesn't align to what, who God says we are. Would you think that was something not too important? That's important. Um, trauma, past haunts, a past that haunts us. I could go on and on. It truly boils down to our thoughts. You know, if we're saved and we love Jesus, we know that blood covers us and he's already died for all this, right? So what is the pit of hell coming back in our minds for to taunt us and haunt us? <laughs> you know, truly, it's his lies that's just trying to keep us in a place of being stuck and not free. So recognizing the lies is, is the first real freedom, uh, key to freedom. So a stronghold of the mind is a lie that Satan has established in our thinking that we count as truth. In actuality, it's false. It's a false belief. When we embrace lies, they affect our attitudes, emotions, and behaviors. God wants all his children to walk in victorious living, especially in our thought life. The thoughts, as we know, is the first thing to our actions, right? Like there's, I can look back and there was so many times that I made a decision and it, it wasn't from truth. Can we all, I mean, I think every one of us here could agree to that. So if we could process our thoughts correctly and know what the truth is about a thought, <laughs> it would save us probably from a lot of trouble or a lot of heartache. I feel like one of the gracious, the most gracious acts of the Lord with his love and mercy and his grace is Paul in the Bible. So y'all know Paul was once Saul. So Saul's going around killing all the Christians. And what did God end up using Paul for? The very opposite, to bring life to many souls. But I love this scripture. It's because of the Lord's redemptive love that he chose Paul to be one to share such a powerful scripture. And this is 2 Corinthians 10.3. And Faye, I think this is the only scripture I gave you. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We keep, can you keep rolling it? For the weapons of our warfare are not a flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Doesn't fortresses also, when we put something, it, it's to do with the stronghold, right? So this is a powerful scripture to bring down, if we can keep going. I should have told you the whole thing. That's my bad. So we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So if your thought comes in and it don't line up to the word of God or what Christ would do, then you just need to say out loud, in the name of Jesus, I take this thought captive. I had to do that for a season out loud, like to really get a, uh, free in one area of my life. It was like I would drive my kids in the van and I'm speaking the scripture because I wasn't going to listen to that lie. And you do it so much, just out loud and just speak it, it stops. Because then he knows, well, she's not playing. You know, this is no joke. So it, there's really victory in it. 
We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing. Okay, we are ready to punish all disobedience whenever your obedience is complete. I'm going to read it in this version here too. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to our flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I mean, that's powerful. So Paul gets to share this. God gives this to Paul to write in 2 Corinthians. Paul, who murdered Christians, God just totally turned everything around. And obviously, all the other amazing scripture Paul wrote um, and was used of the Holy Spirit. I want to share this. I've got to find it, though. Did you hear all the action words in the, that, those scriptures? Pulling, casting, bringing, in this version, having readiness to revenge. So we, the people, his body, we are the ecclesia. We're the ones to do the war, right? Like if we're not using our mouth and warring, what's going to get done? Nothing. <laughs> It's like Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father for a reason, because he's done. Sitting means I'm finished. It doesn't mean he's not interceding for us, because he is. That's, that's still his job. But we're living and walking on this earth. We have domain over every living creature of this earth. We have the power over everything from the pit of hell, every scheme, every plan. So it is us who is to war, just from our mouth. You know, he spoke everything into creation and exist existence. So wouldn't we get the hint that speaking is powerful? So when we speak his word, I think I've shared this before, uh, Psalms 20. Um, there was a season of my life where I was seeking God for freedom. And that's when he started showing me everything. And I'm like, Lord, are you speaking to me? You know, yeah, he was. Well, I was also releasing Psalms 20 daily for a couple years and um then when it happens you know don't I was shocked like I was shocked when 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 the Lord touched me and freed me you know don't be shocked I mean obviously I rejoiced and was thrilled I mean my life was totally different from that point on but it was a little bit of a shock I mean even though we're believing it and we want to we want to see his word come to the fullness of our life um it does nothing but catapult you into the things you're supposed to do. And not that you're not doing anything for God right now, but um, there would be a new authority, a new anointing. There will be things, new gifts he gives you. I had a few gifts I operated in before he set me free. And I had even asked him that one time. I said, Lord, what is it that um, I'm used in, in more gifts in more ways than before? Because I was saved. You know, I was loving him. I, I taught uh, little children from him, for him. So he just spoke and had spoke to my heart and said, when the things in us that bind us leave, then it makes more room for his gifts. So does that not make perfect sense? So the freer we get, the more good gifts, the more our gifts may even expand, you know, because everything's within our spirit. All right. So you all know with me, I'm not Jason, and I don't preach like Jason or teach like Jason. <laughs> so Jason had said, well, give a few personal examples. This was this morning because like at 4 o'clock I'm awake and I would put this all together. And before he left, he shared that. And I was thinking, and I just felt like the Lord say no. Because, I mean, I could elaborate on some things, but... I felt his say no. I felt like we're going to do two different activations. You know, I thought about calling Tammy. You know, like Faye says, sometimes we see other people operating in what their gifts are, and we like, oh, I don't, you know, I'm just going to call them, or I'll have them pray. You know, 
I did. I mean, I think it was like 11 o'clock last night. I was like, it's too late. I can't call Tammy. Because Jason had just shared with me, I really feel you're to teach tomorrow. So I wasn't going to wake Tammy up. And so at 4 o'clock, I wasn't going to wake Tammy up. Um, I was just going to really say, hey, you, do you have an activation? Because she does a lot of this on the Monday night healing encounters. Just bleeding of the Lord. The Lord will put something on her heart. She gets here, all the people that come, and it'll be like a fun. And I love the activities. I've been here several times, many times, and every time. Who was here on that one Wednesday night, probably two years ago? And um, I shared, I took the microphone and shared because God showed me a big steel wall. Remember that? Does it, who was here then on a Wednesday night? No, like nobody. <laughs> so we've, yeah. Um, I'm telling you what, guys, you know, and I had been in the water, you know, how much, how much by then had I already been in the water? So um, God is so good. And, and in that season, it was a Wednesday night that he showed me a big steel wall just had risen. And I think you had asked to ask, uh, what's he going to show you to make that come down? Or like how you, you know, what, I don't remember but this was a Wednesday night. Then he showed me the big red easy button. Now, is that not funny? You know, like, like the kids like to hit or in a game or something. And I'm not joking. I, just, I mean, I just saw it. Like, I just saw this big red easy button. So I just saw myself hitting it. And that wall came down as quick as I saw it raise. And um, I still didn't know. So the next day after that, I, a situation arose that had not been dealt with in probably 10 years. And it was from me seeing somebody in Walmart. And um, wow, it was, it was all a part of, it was actually a, some, an issue of anger, I believe, and um, mistrust. And so I am only in Walmart for two items. I could barely get out to my car where I start bawling. And then the next day, I'm off to a weekend trip to Texas. I get to Texas, and we're just at this person's house, and they bring something up, and the Lord immediately, again, brings up the anger and the mistrust. Is that not awesome? So in four days' time, this is just how he works, you know? I wouldn't have said I had an anger issue. I would have never known I had an anger issue from 10 years previously. Never would I have guessed it. So he's so graciously loving and knows when we're ready to receive it and the time of it. Okay? So that's one story. I wasn't planning on sharing that at all. But back to this. And, and you guys, this is nothing goofy. I just thought if we stood and... And I say these, this is a decree. Oh, oh, listen to another thing that's amazing. Just from yesterday, one of the people I had prayed with this week, she writes, um, her and her two friends from Michigan, they have this little ministry, the three chord strand. So they all three take turns writing things the Holy Spirit's showing them. She blows my phone up yesterday and says, I've got to share this with you. And it was the declaration, and then her word for Wednesday, it'll be published Wednesday, but it's for now. So a lot of this that she sent me yesterday is what God had me use for today, teaching this. Is that not powerful? But later in the day, when we're done cleaning here, well, we'll I'll have to share that in a minute. I forgot. She wrote this declaration, and I thought, okay, Lord, I can't not use this. You know, this is too good. So I feared we could all stand in a minute. And, and you guys just repeat after me. And it's not very long. It's powerful. It's just scripture. And then I have one other one that a lady from the north side of Indy shared with me. Um, just another little, what do you call it, activation um, from a couple weeks ago. And I, and I have just, I really forgot about it until this morning. I'm almost walking out the door. And it's like the Lord said, go find that text. So I have not even went back to this until this morning. So... God knows what he's doing. Um, he is, he's just so good and loves all of you so much. So let's stand, and I'm going to try to read this. 
You know how we used to do the, you all would ring along, read alongside us with, um, what was it called, the, the declarations. So this, I'm just going to say so many words, and you guys just repeat it, okay? And then in a minute, we're going to do an, another activation that's uh, a little different. Okay. We have the same mind as Christ Jesus. We have the same mind as Christ Jesus. Our mind is a battleground. But the truth is setting us free. Thank you for this truth today. We diffuse and defeat every thought from the enemy that he has established in our thinking as truth, but our lies. We walk in the flesh. But we do not war in the flesh. We take our weapons of warfare and pull down every stronghold that the enemy has erected in our minds. The minds of our loved ones. The minds of God's people. We cast down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Our thoughts will obey Christ. We will be ready and vigilant and revenge all disobedience. We as your children, God, will walk in victory and freedom. In our thought lives, our kingdom identity is to gain victory over the stronghold, which lies in our mind. And we will live and minister this freedom to others. Glory to God in the highest. Let's, let's clap and just give him praise. Isn't that powerful? I just thought, oh, keep standing. Yeah. I just love that. I want to share real quick. Years ago, when the Lord, right after he set me free, a pastor come to me about four weeks later and said, go to this retreat. Well, in this retreat, on the third day, as we left, we were given a book. And we were to read this book for nine months and all it was was scripture and and that was part of it this is it and what it did it got that word of God in our spirit and I mean for years when I was prayer altar team worker a lot of what I learned in that book and it, it's nothing but a book she wrote for freedom so it was nothing but the word of God all over the scriptures and it was powerful you know, his word says, his word, is sh- there's, there's nothing sharper of, of the two-edged sword than his word. I mean, that is it. So I'm telling you, it took about 30 minutes to read, and I still, I have, still have the original book, and I have made some prayers for other people of parts of it. You know, when you can discipline yourself and speak out loud, you know, for 30 minutes, it's, your life's going to be different. There's no looking back. So now, if y'all, this is real quick, um, if y'all put your hand, okay, so we're to close our eyes, put our hands on our stomach, and focus on our hand. And all we're going to do, you know, who here, does everyone have Jesus that lives within us? I believe everyone here does. So we're going to say the Jesus in us, us. forgive Everyone that I need to forgive. forgive. Now, if a name comes to mind or a picture of somebody's face, just release that. We can also do that with God. You know, the Jesus in us 
we forgive God? Because a lot of times we're stuck and not thinking we need to forgive God. There's some, maybe a lie. There's something, you know, I don't know the fullness of every situation, but we have the, we have the right to forgive God so we can say the Jesus in us to forgive God. Sometimes we as a person can't or may not know it. The Jesus in us forgive myself. Jesus in me break every ungodly soul tie. Now let's all just take a deep breath and exhale. Father, I just thank you for every person that's in this building, that's in um, the realm of my voice and what you're doing here. We just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you go through and seal by your great wisdom and love and comfort, revelation, the gifts, Father, that reside in heaven that you want to fill your people with. Do it now, Lord. We thank you, God. You are omnipresent. Your love there's nothing like it. It tears barriers down. We thank you, Father, for who you've sent here today. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. This truly was just what you wanted to have happen today. I thank you, Father, for participating, your people participating in your plans. Again, Lord, from the north, south, east, and west, we call forth the people to come and experience you, Jesus, and the water, and just what you're doing on Sunday nights, the last Sunday of every month here in this place. Not one person gets credit, Lord. It's all about you. We thank you, Father, for everything we're learning about the mikvah and how even to this day the importance of it is, of the cleansing of the bride. We are your bride, Lord. Men and women, we are your bride. Jesus, he's coming back after us. And we want to be pure and spotless without wrinkle. Thank you, God. We give you all the glory and praise. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Yeah, give yourselves a hand. Thank you for participating. And you'll see around, um, like at the door, back here in the restrooms, uh, the hallway, you'll see the little things. If, if the Lord touched you in some manner, connect with us. We usually share this a water immersion evenings, but get with us if the Lord touched you in some way or you, you may feel uh, no longer anxious. Sometimes just a little anxious or fear. You know, you may not feel afraid anymore. Um, just walk out this next week and see if you notice a difference in, in any area of your life and let us know. We would love to hear that because God is so good. And again, invite people to the Water Immersion Sunday, whether it's a physical issue, emotional. Um, we have had some mighty, mighty deliverance in the water, and it's a beautiful thing. And for some reason, in this house, Jason and I have been to many churches and many times of places where Pastor Todd and, and others have ministered at Water Immersions. And, and when um, there's a demonic force within somebody, it's kind of a show. You know, it's kind of like it wants to rise up and make a scene or a show. And we have been experiencing this now since June in the water with no voice, no voice from the entity. I mean, I don't know what you want to say it is or what it was even. It doesn't matter. The people are free. There's been other ministers, four or five of us will minister, and there'll be others not even knowing the person two or three down from them were totally delivered. And, and then what happens is the freedom that remains, some people realize, hey, there's still something hanging on. So they come back and do it again. And because God's so gracious, you know, he can, we all know, he could touch us and we all could be free immediately of every little thing, every hurt, every, we know he could, but he uses it to teach us things too. You know, if he just, I mean, he wants us freer than we want ourselves, and it's only to further his kingdom. But there's a reason why he does it in processes or timing. So, you know, 
I love when people come back and say, hey, I've recognized this. I ain't dealing with it. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's freedom. Before, they didn't even recognize it. They didn't even know what it was. You know, they get in, they get some sort of measure of freedom, and then they're running back because they're like, look, I, I'm not having this in my life. So just be encouraged. Uh, share. We've got some brochures over here, half sheets of the water immersion. If you need to take a stack, that's fine. So we're just uh, rejoicing along. If anyone needs to come to the altar for anything or prayer, we can do that as well too. We're a little early, but that's all right. Okay. Thanks for your ears. <laughs> Anybody here? I know you're a first-time visitor. Okay, I was who you, I answered your call. So it's good. I'm 